joining me is someone who never lets the slights go because you can't let them go. She's out there resisting. And that is her book. This is why I resist. She's also founder and editor, editor in chief of the Women in Leadership publication. Let me welcome back to the show, Dr. Shola Mos Shogbamimu. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me back. Yes, yes, you are the queen that I recognize from Great Britain. Hi. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) So um, last time I was, you know, I follow you on social media. You were in New York, out there in the streets, jogging in the park. I was like, look at at Dr. Shola out here in our streets, jogging and stuff. You you go back home across the pond, your queen dies and and it's been, so how, how, as a British, uh, you know, you know, person, how, how's the last week been for you? Cause it's been like two weeks, basically. It feels like a year. Yeah. Honestly, the last two weeks feels like a month. I mean, it's, it's been, it's pure insanity. Okay. So first of all, there is a lot to deal with that, um, you know, the reigning monarch for the last 70 years has passed away. She's 96 years old, and she's the only British monarch that many millions of, um, you know, British people know, and especially those from the colonies. It's Elizabeth II that many of us know. So, of course, there would be that period of time where people come to terms with her passing and the mourning. But then it quickly turned into something else. It became a spectacle, a spectacle where I don't believe really um, gave respect, if if I'm perfectly honest. And I'm talking particularly about how it impacts, you know, day-to-day people. So for instance, um, and I use this example, I'm like, look, her funeral is gonna cost a whole lot of money in the height of a cost of living crisis, right? Where millions of British people cannot eat i.e. put food in their bellies or heat their their homes. And we all know that the queen's personal worth is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And her, the family, the royal family's worth is in the billions of dollars. I'd have thought that at a time like this, it really should be the royal family paying more for the funeral, i.e. you know her estate, because the rest of us have to pay for our own estate. Oh, Wait, you know, pause, right? pause, hold on. I got to pay, you got to pay when a family member dies or we got to do a GoFundMe, right? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Why isn't it their responsibility to pay for the death of their loved one? I know, I know, but th- this is how it works. This is the problem. This is how it works. And it, it, I think this is why it brings the question at this time, the point of the monarchy. But it's not just that. It's also the wall-to-wall coverage. It's also the way... Um, She's now being spoken about. There's so much exaggerated epitaphs about her that I'm like, wait, hold up a second. Are we talking about the same person? All of a sudden it's Elizabeth II, the great. I'm like, okay. Or Elizabeth II, the feminist icon. I'm like, okay, you guys, (laughs) I'm trying to be respectful of your period of mourning, but you're going to bring me out to have to say some things you're not going to like. You know, there's just no point whitewashing her legacy why don't you be respectful, be sad, mourn, grieve, do what you need to do, but please don't lie. <laughs> hmm. So let, let me ask you, you your folk, um, you, you were born, were you born in Great Britain? Yes, in London. Okay. Yes. All right. Your folk came over from Nigeria, right? Well, my, just, fo- my, my folk, come- so to speak, my, my, my parents, so to speak, were, um, yes, subjects of the Queen. Remember, Nigeria is a former colony of Great Britain. And um, my parents worked here, they studied, but they never, let me just read this way. I remember my father saying to me that in his country, he's a first class citizen. So as far as he was concerned, you know, Nigeria was always home for him. So he, I was never raised thinking that um, I did not belong in any one place. I was always brought up thinking whether I'm in London or I'm in Lagos, both are my homes. That's where I'm from, where I lay my, where I step my foot onto, that's where I have dominion. Mm, come on, dominion. And you know, <laughs> Dr. Shola, I, I, I love, you, you have a law degree. You, you have a degree in economics. You have a PhD. Oh. Well, not in economics, but <laughs> no, I, I have a degree. Uh, my degrees are mostly in law. Um, I have an MBA, so that's in um, business administration. 
okay. um, in diplomatic studies. I don't know what economics will come in. No, no, no. I went to the London School of Economics and Political Science, where okay. I got a master's degree in law as well. Okay. What I'm saying to you and everyone listening is that you're, you know, when people bring you on to ask questions, they're bringing on somebody that's expert in many areas. You're a woman that reads, you're a woman that has studied, you, you know, your history, you know, the history of the place that you're in, you know, the laws of the place that you're in. I feel like we're in a space right now and I'm going to indict media because there's so many people talking who have no grounding, no tertiary knowledge of anything. But they may look good, you know, they may sound good and they may read well. Yeah. I think we're at a place where we should be, we should raise the bar for the people who get to speak, period, right? And <laughs> I hear you, but the reality is that we need to make space for everyone. Um, because especially when it comes to cultural, social issues or social cultural issues, should I say, everyone has an opinion on something. But I hear you because at the same time, what we what we don't want is, uh, or should I say our opinions that really are, they have no grounding. It's like yesterday I was on a, I was on a debate where the person on the other side was arguing that the monarchy is actually about democracy, that it's, that the monarchy is what makes democracy possible. And the monarchy is it, it, it supports equality. And I had to ask, are you living in an alternate universe? What are you talking about? So I, I think people- That's my point, has, Dr. Shola, you should never have had to argue anything with somebody who would but say But he's something. a professor. The guy is a professor. Oh, he's, okay. he's equally well learned, but I think that because we are all passionate about our points of views, and no, no one point of view lives in isolation. So there are people in this world that think exactly as he does. And people in this world that think exactly as I do. And then somewhere in the middle are people that do not agree with either of us or just do not care and very, very indifferent. They're like, well, it's not gonna matter anyway. Um, so I hear you, especially when you listen to the likes of the far rights and the MAGAs and you think, are these people out of their minds? Where do you come up with this kind of stuff? But this is why we have to keep pushing. We have to enter those spaces where if you leave them alone in that space, they're going to turn people's minds. So you, I think you always have to bring that other perspective so that it is never a case where people will go, oh, but I didn't know. Yes, you did. Because there was a voice like mine. There was a voice like yours, but you weren't listening. And if you're listening to, uh, to any point of view, and you um and that point of view resonates more with you that means that represents you so I, yeah i'm just not in the mood for people going but i didn't know oh i wasn't aware i'm sorry aren't you grown i mean what, yes. what do you want you want someone to hold your hands and take you to school you need yes. to educate yourself uh we're talking with dr adashola I want to give her whole name, Dr. Adashola. I, I <laughs> struggle with her last, pronounce your last name. So I, I don't want to butcher it. You, no, you said it brilliantly uh, really before. So okay. just read it phonetically. Uh, most most shogbamimo. Well done, baby. That's okay. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> We, you mentioned MAGA uh, today, Letitia James, Letitia James, Tish oh. James um, hit Donald J. Trump and 511 other Trump people and amen. associates with amen. a civil suit. Amen. Why are you amening across the pond? What does what is that? What do you have to do with this? It has everything to do with us. I keep, look, when America sneezes, the rest of us catch a cold. I was one of those protesting here on, on the streets of London when Donald Trump was made president of the United States of America. We care because a lot of the legislation and policies and the narratives he put, he put out impacted women, impacted black women, impacted Muslims, impacted people generally. So as far as I was concerned, no, it's my business. And you know, I think everybody should have a say in American politics. We should get to vote, quite frankly. <laughs> because he made some stupid ass policies that not only put America in a bad light, but impacted the rest of the world because as they say, he was the president of the most, you know, America gives itself its own title. Um, <laughs> and, and because he, he had that kind of power, he was a dangerous man. 
So yeah, I am very pleased. In fact, I, I've got my popcorn ready. I do not know what it, why it took them so long. I don't care. But I am ready for a very public, humiliating downfall for Donald Trump. It could not come soon enough. Okay, let me talk to you about another very powerful, dangerous man, Vladimir Putin, who mm. is getting his ass whooped by a little tiny country right next to his called Ukraine. And as a result now is hinting at some sort of nuclear option, which our president, uh, Joe Biden today, basically was like, no, you're not going to do that. But can we control it? How do you how should the world because, you know, again, there are no more borders and boundaries as it relates to um, terror and carnage. Right. Yeah. One yeah. one out one person like Putin can up in everybody's life across the globe. Right. Um, how are you processing that there, your folk? Let me tell you this. Now, this is my opinion now. Not j- I, I can't, I, I'm not going to hazard a guess as to how my government here would choose to respond. I don't expect them to say anything different from what um, the U.S. is saying, which is, you know, to respond um, very strongly um, to what Putin is basically threatening the world with. But I am not surprised. I mean, why is anybody surprised that he will go down this route? I, it, look, the writing was on the wall. Sanctions were not going to work with this madman. He already played his cards. He put them out there. He made it quite clear to everybody. I want Ukraine. I don't care how mad the rest of you get. We are a powerful nation. We've got other powerful nations like, I don't know, China, you know, and all the other ones that have not publicly denounced us of which and they're, they're not few, you know? And so as far as Putin is concerned, he's going to push this as much as he can because he does not feel he has anything to lose. And the fact that now it seems like he's going to be recruiting Russians, right? Making it mandatory for them to join this war. Maybe Russians will now wake the heck up. I mean, to be fair, there've been a good um, number of Russians who have protested uh, Russia's participation in this war because it just made no sense. But maybe this will make the wider population of Russia go, I'm sorry, why? No, we thought you were you know, playing your game and we don't have to lose our lives or limbs for this. But if we have to, we now have to ask, why are you doing this? I am yeah. not surprised. I think that the rest of the, of the Western world, because really this is their mess. They've allowed Putin to get away with this. He's done this before with other wars and they allowed this to happen again. What they should have been doing from day one was not sitting down, just giving strong words and just sending ammunition to um, to Ukraine, which they should have done. That's not a problem, but they should have done more than that. I think they should have demonstrated from day one to Putin that if you take a step towards nuclear war, we will finish you and we are ready to. You know, when you're going to fight a mad person, you can't come with sanity or or appear reasonable that's not going to work you, no. we have to be able to demonstrate to Britain if you're ready to go that mad we will move madder than you yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I want you to be can you be like queen of the world D- dr shola is here uh you have a new prime minister her name is liz trust uh, uh yeah. do you trust trust is she somebody that we how should we be viewing her all right, my dear. Let me tell you what I call Liz Truss. I call her Liz Truss Not. Does that answer your question? Okay. I mean, look, she was not voted in democratically <laughs> by the population of the United Kingdom. Okay. She was voted in to replace the um, the former leader of the Conservative Party, the you know incompetent, lying, two faced, waste of space Boris Johnson. Okay, and her party chose her even though she was not as competent as the other competitor, Rishi Sunak. Now, I would not vote for Rishi Sunak. I do not like the policies of the Conservative Party. I don't, but anybody with any sense would say that Rishi Sunak was far more competent than she was. Absolutely. But we know why Rishi Sunak was not you know, picked. He's Asian. They were not ready for a, a brown prime minister. Plus they, they sold, you know, they sold all this, this trope against him that he stabbed Boris Johnson in the back. So of course he can't be trusted. How dare this Asian who our Boris Johnson put in a position of power, stabbing him, stabbing him in the back. You know, that whole, 
the, the typical kind of racial trope that brings somebody down, even though he's he's more competent than she is. Anyway, so Liz Truss, as we can see in the first couple of weeks, um, she doesn't know what the heck she's doing at all. I am not excited about her, by her. Um, there was a, a celebrity who put out a, a, a tweet and she asked, can somebody tell me who Liz Truss is? Can you, can you just explain to me like I'm five-year-old? Oh, it's John Legend's um, wife. Um, John Legend's Chrissy, wife. Chrissy Teigen. Yes, 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 yes. So she put out a tweet saying, can somebody tell me who Liz Truss is or what she's about? So I, I, I quote tweeted going, Liz Truss is the human form of nothing to see here. Okay, <laughs> that's what Liz Truss is. Nothing, except, there's nothing to except, see here. Except she's prime minister in Great Britain. I okay. know. Yeah. All right. Let me we have less than two minutes. Um, I said that Queen Elizabeth would be the last to sit on a throne. I was wrong. Maybe. I think the monarchy's days are numbered. Do you feel like this is it? The the drum beats her death to abolishing the monarchy? I think the reckoning will happen. The fact that the people more vocal and uh, you know visibly vocal about um, about the monarchy, about becoming a republic and questioning the legitimacy uh, and necessity of the monarchy, that this wasn't happening, you know, not, it wasn't happening as vocally as it is now. And that people are not hiding their feelings about it. And even what makes it worse is how the police were arresting people for holding placards, for saying, not my king. It, I, I mean, they even arrested somebody or um, yeah, I think there was a guy who had a blank um, placard and they said, look, depends on what you write on there, but we, we could arrest you because it would be breaching the peace. Can you imagine that? And that's because the former conservative government, oh, no, scrap that, this conservative government, because Liz Truss is the same as Boris Johnson, you know, they created laws that gave the police such powers. So bottom line is, I think, yes, there's a reckoning. I don't know how long it's going to take but the reckoning is coming.